Hey, hey, it's Zenial Gamer, and today we are going to be talking about farming the Essence Dungeons. Now, I'm going to do all the dungeons in one video because I know this is not exactly a hot button topic, and I'm not going to go into quite the level of detail that I did in the uh, NB10, GB10 type videos, but I will show you the teams I'm using. I'll talk about a couple of other comps briefly, and then I'm going to put uh, markers in the section, uh, in the description section down below of where each dungeon starts. So if you want to skip ahead to a dungeon, uh, you're certainly welcome to, to look at the comp I'm using or the comp I recommend. Uh, I'll show you my ranks for each dungeon as well. Uh, a few of them are really good. A few of them are kind of so-so. Uh, but the one thing is, every one of these ranks was achieved with a team that I actively use for farming. There's no no teams in here that were built just for like a super fast rank, even though it'll fail a lot. And so these are more sustainable teams that give you, uh, or at least give me, the fastest average speeds that I can get. So we're going to start at Hall of Water because it's the most straightforward. I'm ranked 35. I absolutely promise you all 34 teams above me are using the exact same team and the 165 below me are probably using the same team too. Pick any one of these at random and it's going to be double Lucian, Halea, Lin. Uh, well, excuse me, double Lucian, Halea, double Lin. Every one of these teams is going to be double Lucian, Halea, Lin. I'm just clicking at random right here. When I get far enough down, I'll find somebody who didn't have a second Lin and it's probably going to be replaced with something like a Teshar. Um, in an extreme case, you might even use a Spectra. Before I had any Lins, I actually used Spectra on this boss. Uh, but because the gimmick of the boss of the Hall of Water is that he's got almost 2 million HP, you have to use monsters that are going to do damage that are scaled off the enemy max HP. So again, this is a very, very straightforward team there is pretty much no other option for speed times. Now, don't get me wrong, you can beat this level without having two lins, not a problem. Just use your double Lucian and your Halea, and then use any two HP, enemy max HP scaling monsters for the boss. Uh, now, I'll uh, throw in the disclaimer right now, my Lucians were recently reruned. I moved them up to max crit uh, rate, and I reduced their damage a little bit, so my second Lucian might not clear this second wave. Oh, he did, okay. Um, so your two Lucians go, you have the Halea goes with the defense break and the brand, and then your two Lins go. And so that was literally, this is the first take video I did, or the first take I've done on this video, it was a 15 second run. Not every run goes that perfectly, of course, because Lucians are Lucians and they derp a lot. Even when your Lucian's derp, you very rarely will go over 30 seconds with this team. And again, if you don't have two lins, you can go ahead and just use any two HP scaling monsters. Okay, the next one that's also very straightforward is Hall of Light. Uh, I was actually rank 11 before they changed it, and uh, now rank 293, and the difference is like half a second. My, my old best time was like 11.7, was rank 11. So. Uh, obviously, there are a lot of people condensed in a very small gap here. First place is 10.6, 300th is 12.3. This boss, his gimmick is that he's got like less than 100k HP, but he's got like infinite defense. And so you need de ignore defense monsters. So again, you're going to run a double Lucian to clear the waves. And then you are going to follow up with pretty much any two ignore defense monsters. The fastest comp I've found for this is to have your Kali go third, you know, the fire high elemental, and then to have a Covenant go fourth. Covenant with attack boost, if he's moderately well ruined, doesn't have to be crazy, he can one-shot the boss. And if he does not have attack boost, he can do 60-70% of the boss HP. Again, we're not talking like super great runes, we're just talking so-so runes, like attack, crit damage, attack without great subs. So the reason it works when you have Kali going third is because if she derps with her skill 2, then she attack boosts the covenant. If she uses, excuse me, if she derps with her skill 3. Uh, if she uses her tectonic shift skill 2, which is what you want her to use, then covenant can still use his headshot to clear the boss either way. Uh, this team that I'm running right now, I had the Talia in there because my Lucians were not max crit rate before. Uh, that Talia was actually uh, unruined at the time. I think she's got runes now. Uh, I don't farm Light Essence much. Um, but the basic concept is still the same. My Kali has been changed up. She is no longer anywhere near speed tuned with Lucians. 
uh, she's like double the speed of my illusions practically. And so I couldn't use her anymore. And my covenant is actually deruned at the moment. So I just picked two other ignore defense monsters. Bethany is not even a hundred percent ignore defense. She's 30% with two chances. And I literally put the worst possible runes I could find on her just so I could farm light rift and it still works. It still succeeds. It's just a little bit slower. So Bottom line for this one, all you need is two Lucians and two Ignore Defense monsters. If you want some backup and you can put in a third Ignore Defense, that's fine. Uh, otherwise, you could also, if you have, like, um, I happen to have a Dupe Perna, which is unleveled. So I could also just throw my Dupe Perna in there to get a little bit of extra attack percentage, something like that. Okay, now next let's look at Hall of Fire. Uh, so I'm ranked 43, but one thing on this one is I am actually using a very different team than most of the ones above me. Almost all of the teams above me are using a double Lucian. And for me, that was a little too much RNG to try and rely on two Lucians to both amp and both clear waves. It, doesn't necessarily lead to fails because Hall of Fire is not a tough level, but it does lead to some really slow runes. So I was trying to find something more consistent. And what I wound up with was you st I still needed one Lucian to clear the waves. Uh, but from there, I use a Galleon and the Water Homunculus comp. So the way this team actually works is my Water Homunculus is faster than Lucian. He's at 188. And then my Lucian is going to be uh, 166. So Galleon goes first. The water homunculus can usually clear the wave as long as all the defense breaks lands. Uh, so it's almost like getting a Lucian on that first wave, but different. If for some reason Galleon derps, then the water homunculus won't quite clear, but he still can freeze. Or if he goes with his skill two, he absorbs attack bar. So no matter what, that wave tends to move more quickly. Uh, then we have the Lucian Amp for the second wave, and then we're using Crow to add in Brand and as a backup defense breaker and Lin for boss scaling damage. So I'm going to show you how this team works. So basically we're going to have our Galleon go first. Of course, ideally he would not have derped there, but he did. And so you could see we still had our backup. And now he goes second, and look at that, Water Homunculus wound up clearing the second wave instead. So it was kind of like derp protection. When my Galleon derped, my Lucian cleared the wave. Then my Galleon did not derp on the second wave, and the Water Homunculus cleared it. If Galleon had not derped on the first wave, then the Water Homunculus would have cleared that wave, and Lucian would have been there to clear the second wave. So to me, this is a little bit more of a reliable system than the double Lucians. Uh, that particular run was 32 seconds, which is probably about as slow as this team gets. Obviously, the 16 seconds is about as fast as this team gets. So I'm going to run one more run on fast forward. Hopefully, you'll get to see a better version of this team. And so I think that was probably somewhere in the low 20 second range. Yeah, 21 second range. That was a more normal run for this team. Okay, so next we're going to move to the Hall of Dark. And you'll see my rank here is a little bit lower, and the reason for that is because my Lucians aren't strong enough to clear the waves. Uh, you really need like crazy G3 fat Lucian runes to clear these waves. It can be done, and that's how you see the top scores at about 13 seconds, but I can't quite get there. So one of the things you do on this level to get extra damage on your Lucians is you can use an Orang, which is um, the Wind Ninetale Fox, and then you run a double Lucian, and you have the Halea and a Lin. So the Orang is probably acting after the two Lucians here. And the idea would be the two Lucians clear the two waves. And then uh, your Halea goes for the brand and the defense break. And then your Orang and your Lin. Uh, in my case, I use a Galleon because my Lucians can't clear the waves. And again, because they can't clear the waves, it's going to be a slightly slower run. But I think my Lucians are probably closer to the uh, normal runes of anybody who'd be watching a video like this. So... Uh, both the first Lucian is 100% crit rate, which helps here in the dark level, but only 184 crit damage, less attack. Second one's got more crit damage and attack, but not the 100% crit rate. And so what, what happens here is my Galleon is going to give me an attack buff, which will allow one Lucian to clear the wave with that attack buff. And then the um, second wave, at least I get a defense break from the Galleon, and then the rest of my team works together to clear the wave. Now my fastest times will come if Galleon gets some procs on that first wave and it allows me to clear the second wave because he procs through, uh, like right there, one more proc and I could have cleared that wave because he would have given me uh, the attack buff again. 
In this case, he didn't, but you'll see I'm still moving along pretty well because of the double lens. Now, if you don't have two lens, uh, Orang is a really good option here. Teshar would also work, or again, pretty much anything that is going to give you uh, damage that scales on the enemy's max HP. Uh, so that run was 25 seconds. That's pretty consistent for this team. It doesn't have a wide range, uh, 19 obviously being the best and 30, 31 probably being the worst. Okay, so next we're going to look at the Hall of Wind, and for me, and I think for most people, this is the hardest one to get consistent times on. Uh, a big part of that is because the waves are really difficult to clear. My Lucians cannot clear the waves. Again, this is one where you just need absolutely insane G3 fat Lucian level runes in order to clear the waves. Uh, so for myself, I have to use the Galleon again with the double Lucians. It's the same thing as uh, explained in the Hall of Dark. So I'll get through it a little bit faster if I get a couple of Galleon procs and I can get an attack boost on both waves. Otherwise, I have to go through and clear the second. Well, I, whichever wave the Lucians don't clear. Sometimes it's first if I don't get the attack buff there. I have to go through and clear them a little bit more slowly. Now, what I just showed you right there was my fastest time. I got this while I was experimenting with different teams. I was trying to see if I could set up a speed team, and I just couldn't because I didn't have enough damage. So the team that I wound up settling on that gives me the most consistency of speed is Double Lucian, and this is a weird team, I know. Double Lucian, Lauren, Elsherion, and Bastet. Uh, so the concept behind this is I've got three defense breakers and two strippers, and then it's my Lucians obviously driving the damage. They're getting an attack buff from Bastet. So I can usually clear the first wave with um, Bastet giving me the attack buff and then a Lucian amp. The second wave Bastet is, if she doesn't derp, going to do her AoE attack. But of course, because we're in win, she's not going to defense break them all because she has attribute disadvantage. But she'll defense break a couple, and that speeds up the clearing of the wave. Lauren is my primary defense breaker, obviously, because she doesn't have the attribute disadvantage and because she's Lauren and she defense breaks and procs and does all that crazy stuff. Um, in terms of the runes, my Lauren is acting second. She's pretty fast and so she will lap and so that gives me some extra defense break opportunities, but it also gives me some extra strip opportunities. Between the violent and the speed, she gives me more chances to strip the invincibility off the boss. Now, if you're not familiar, uh, well, you should be familiar with it, but just as a reminder, uh, the thing with this boss is that the left side pillar is going to give it a full HP recovery. So if you're not killing the side pillars, then you have to kill the boss before that left side pillar recovers the boss. Now, the left side pillar moves very slow. The attack bar ticks up very slowly. But the right side recovery gives the boss invincibility, or the right side crystal gives the boss invincibility. So what we have to do is be able to strip the boss and kill it before the left side crystal fills up its HP. And that's why we're running double strippers. Now I have tried monsters like um, Belita down here. Unfortunately, I don't have Martina because if you have Martina, it's like a cheat code. Martina just dominates this stage. Uh, not for top speeds, but for consistency. Belita, which is the uh, Chakram instead of the Boomerang, her skill three also strips and it, it actually converts the invincibility into a DOT, but it's a four turn cooldown or really three turn with her spirit focus. Uh, so it's not as reliable as we'd like. And then before they uh, changed the twins, you could actually run Shayna and um, Maruna with Belita, and it was very reliable because the Maruna would force Shayna to have a second AoE attack and reduce the attack bars of the crystals. Now that Shayna no longer reduces the attack bars, uh, the twins I found just aren't quite as viable. What'll happen is you might be able to do some 40 second runs and then you follow it up with a two and a half minute run because they don't kill the boss before that left, left crystal boosts the boss. Um, I didn't show the runes, but my Elsharion is on a hybrid build because I do use him in PvP once in a while. So he's speed, crit damage, HP, which means he's not doing a lot of damage on this level. It's really all my Lucian's driving it. And so what we're going to see is probably a run in the 40 to 42 to 47 second range, maybe closer to 50. That's the average of this team is mid 40 seconds. It is not anywhere near as fast as I'd like it to be. But the positive to that is that I don't pop out those two and a half minute runs unless I just have like actually right now we've got some terrible RNG in the background. But unless I just have the worst RNG, I can usually kill the boss before that left crystal restores its HP. 
So there we go, that run was 52 seconds. And again, that's, that's not too far out of line for this. We'll see some in the low to mid 40s and then some in the low to mid 50s. It'll average out to be like 47, 48 seconds. Uh, hopefully this will give you some ideas for an improvement over your team or if you're running faster than I am maybe you can share your ideas with me and then for our last one we're gonna be going with the Hall of Magic of course and uh, one of the first things to remember about the Hall of Magic is that you're fighting monsters of all different attributes on the waves so although Lucian is gonna be used here uh, he's gonna give you your best times as always Lucian doesn't necessarily provide you with as much consistency. He won't always clear the waves because when he has attribute disadvantage, he can wind up with some glancing hits. With that said, obviously I'm using double Lucian. Obviously you'll see double Lucian on every one of these top scores. It's just not as consistent as we'd like, but it is still the best way to clear the waves. So my particular comp is going to be double Lucian with Galleon, Crow, and Lin. And the Galleon is gonna be here to give me that attack buff again. So it's just kind of protection against my Luc Lucian getting glancing hits. My Lucian would clear the whole wave if he crit, crit everything. He's strong enough for that. But if he gets a couple of glancing hits on the fire monster, then it doesn't clear the wave. So the extra defense break and the attack buff from Galleon gives me some protection on that. Now this particular team is probably gonna run an average of low 20 second range, maybe 22, 24 second average. Uh, on a really bad run, I might hit 32, 34 seconds, and then obviously my best run is 16. So the run that we saw in the background there was pretty typical of this team. Uh, I think I forgot to mention the purpose that Crow serves here. He's a backup defense breaker. He's a big nuker, of course. And then he gives me the brand for Lin. So the Galleon Crow combination is like the poor man's Halea. Um, if you really need the attack buff from Galleon, then you, you mix Crow in with Galleon to get that same effect of Halea. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope you guys found this useful. I know farming essences isn't necessarily something we all freak out about, but uh, bear in mind that if you're, you know, especially if you're doing a fusion and you're farming a ton of essences for the fusion and you're in the dungeon all day, if you shave 20 seconds off of every run, it makes a big difference. It could save you hours throughout the day. So it really is worth optimizing your teams. It's not worth going all out and ruining monsters just for essence dungeons. Definitely not. But if you can put together faster teams based on the monsters you have, it really is a lot more efficient. It can save you a lot more time and, and a lot of boredom. Uh, so once again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time. Hey guys, if you enjoyed the video, please pop that subscribe button over on the left. Uh, it shows me that you enjoyed the video, but more importantly, it shows me that you found the information useful, and hopefully it helped you in your gameplay. So here's the deal. You pop subscribe, and I'll keep popping out content. Thanks, guys.